ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم اما بعد اب جي ما سين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم we see breath in the lost but Allah from shaitan the accursed for really he is a doom of being to mankind he is an avowed enemy to mankind so we say a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajeem then we begin by saying bismillahir rahmanir rahim in the name of Allah the most merciful most merciful truly and very all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him and seek only his help and his forgiveness we also seek breath in the lost but Allah from the above our nafs for very the nafs it is a kind of do so it is inclined to do evil except by the rahma of Allah. We also see breath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the sayyati amalina, those deeds and those actions that are not sanctioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, and those deeds and actions that are not sanctioned by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Sunnah. Those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be guided to Islam, for guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can lead him astray. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if he wishes to guide someone, it is he who opens their heart to Islam. And if Allah wishes to lead someone astray, no one can guide. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one God who has no partners. And we bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is his slave and his messenger, Amma Ba. The Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that verily the best speech, the best hadith, is the speech of Allah in the Quran, and the best guidance, the best hadith, is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Sunnah. And the worst of all matters are those things that are innovated by the people. For all innovation leads to bid'ah, all bid'ah leads to dalala, which is going off the surah of the and all dalala is in the nar, which is the fire. So we see breath of the last from that fire. We say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi akinati hasana, wa fi na adab al nar. O Allah, give us good in this life, hasana. O Allah, give us good in the next life, hasana. And be not adab al nar, and save us from the punishment of the fire, ya Allah. Ameen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah bless us with another day of Jumu'ah in this month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we have Rahmah upon Rahmah, Barakah upon Barakah, mercy upon mercy, blessing upon blessing. Juma and Ramadan, how can it get any better? In this day, we have the opportunity of being forgiven of all of our sins, and during this month, we have the opportunity of being forgiven of all of our sins. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that those who fast sincerely during the month of Ramadan, they do it sincerely and they stand up in the night, right? Praying, qiyam expecting and hoping for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa that they will be forgiven of all of their sins. He said, accept the qaba'ir, accept the qaba'ir. And this is the subject matter of today. We must understand that during this month of Ramadan, Yes, we will, we will be forgiven of our sins. We have the opportunity of being forgiven of our sins. All of them, right? But the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, except the Qaba'ir, okay? With the Qaba'ir, we gotta make Tawbah to that, okay? So the subject matter today is a Astaghfar and Tawbah. A Astaghfar, which means seeking forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, but also at the same time, there's another thing that we must uh, add to that Astaghfar, which is the Tawbah. Astaghfar is the verbalage. You said, I stuck for the law, right? Some people just stop right there. But the other part that comes with that is the Tawbah, okay? Which we're gonna get into, inshallah. We must also understand that during this month of Ramadan, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that we must come into this Ramadan with a clean heart, right? A heart that doesn't have any malice, right? A heart that doesn't have any hatred or disgust or any ill malice towards your Muslim brother. We're told in multiple hadiths that anyone who has a grudge against a Muslim brother, right? You won't be forgiven of your sins. So you can fast the whole month of Ramadan, right? You can stand up for all the Qiyam layer. But if you have some type of grudge, you have some type of situation with a brother that hasn't been resolved, then you won't get that reward that comes with Ramadan, right? So we must try to reconcile that going into this month of Ramadan, we're already halfway through, but it's not over with yet. Those who have some type of situations with their Muslim brother, those who have some type of situation with their Muslim sisters, this is something that must be resolved. You won't have a Ramadan. You won't have a fast. You won't be forgiven of none of your sins, 
right? If you don't reconcile with your Muslim brother, your Muslim sister. Allah said in the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem. In chapter 42, verse 40, Allah states, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem. Wa jazaa'u sayyatin, sayyatin mithluha. He says, and the reward of a sayyat, the reward of an evil, right, is the evil light of it, right? وَمَنْ أَفَا وَأَسْلَحَا فَأَجَرَهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ So Allah says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ الشَّيْطَ الرَّجِيمِ He said, the reward of an evil is the likeness of that evil. But whoever blots out and forgives, right? أَفَا Meaning you blot it out. You act like it don't exist, right? وَأَسْلَحَا And they reconcile. فَأَجَرَهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ then his reward is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So he said that you have the opportunity, the reward of someone that does evil is the likeness of that evil, right? We know that's kisas, retaliation. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but the one who afa, the one who blots out, the one who forgives, and the one who reconciles, your reward will be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And we want that reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we don't, even, we don't even understand the magnitude or the greatness that that reward could be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, la yuhibbu Right? He says, he don't like those who are the oppressors. He don't like those who are the, the wrongdoers. Right? So we have the opportunity, if someone does something wrong to you, right? This is the option with the Muslim. Someone that does something wrong to you, you have the option of kisas. Right? A wound for a wound. A scar for a scar, a hit for a hit. But Allah Subhanahu wa says, but the one who blots out, the one who forgives, and the one who reconciles, your reward is with Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, We want that reward with Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want that quick fix. It's easy to just, oh, I'm going to hit you back, or I'm going to get you back, right? But Allah Subhanahu says, but the one who blots out, right? This is the one that will get reward from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want that reward. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil also in another ayah, Allah SWT says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ الشَّيْطَ الرَّجِيمِ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ فَأَصْلِهُ بَيْنَ أَثَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ لَأَلَكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Allah SWT says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ الشَّيْطَ الرَّجِيمِ Chapter 49, verse 10. He says, Verily the believers, they are brothers. Therefore, reconcile between your brothers. And have taqwa of Allah SWT لَأَلَكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ and again, here goes that word again, Turhamun, so that you may be of those who obtain Allah's Rahmah. We all, we talk about that Allah said that our nafs, we're inclined to do evil, we're inclined to do bad, except by the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa says, and verily the believers are ikhwa. He didn't say the Muslimin are ikhwa. He said the Mu'minin are ikhwa. Those who strive in his deen, those who believe the same, those who will work the same actions, they are ikhwa. فَأَصْلِهُ So therefore, reconcile between the believers. Reconcile between the mu'minin. Right? And then Allah subhanahu says, وَاتَّقَ اللَّهِ And have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that those who can forgive their brother, those who can reconcile with their Muslim brother, right? The mu'mins of the muslimin. Right? This is the higher level. Those who understand this. Right? It takes iman to do this. وَاتَّقَ اللَّهِ لَأَلَكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ And have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, meaning to be able to reconcile or to forgive your brother, right? That this takes some type of taqwa. To forgive your brother, it doesn't mean that you're weak, right? To forgive your brother, it doesn't mean that you're soft. It doesn't mean, oh, that you have, you don't have another option. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may be of those who maintain Allah's rahmah. So those who forgive, those who try to reconcile, Right? Those who are fine, those who blot out certain things when people do things to them, this is because they have taqwa. This is because they have iman. And this is because they strive to obtain Allah's mercy. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Okay? So therefore, understanding that during this month of Ramadan, this is the time to reconcile with your Muslim brother and your Muslim sister. Something happened between you two, or whatever it may be, right? Whatever it may be. This is the time to reconcile. Say, you know what? Because this is the month of Ramadan, man, I'm a afa. I'm going to be of those who forgive. I'm going to be of those who make my heart clean. 
right? Of any type of ill, malice, or whatnot towards anybody. Why? Because Allah Subhanahu wa said that those who do that, He'll forgive you of your sins. Alhamdulillah, me. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said in Hadith, they will not obtain mercy or rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? In whose hearts is no rahmah for others. You will not obtain the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who does not have rahmah in their heart for others. In another hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, those who do not show rahmah or mercy to the people on earth will not be given rahmah from him who's in heaven. So understanding that those who are merciful, those who give people a chance, right? These are the ones that understand that they want a chance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Like they say, judge not unless you want to be judged. So by the same judging, you will be judged. So if you're hard on somebody, man, nah, man, I'm not forgiving, I'm not gonna forgive this person. I'm not gonna give this person another chance. Nah, nah, so quick. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, man, I will judge you like that. If you're not merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't be merciful to you. And this is something that we gotta always work on. And it takes taqwa. This is not soft. Someone who can forgive or someone who can always try to help people and whatnot. This is from taqwa. This is from those who understand. This is from iman. One who understands that he believes in the loss for the lost promise. He says those who are angry and they forgive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them of their sins and then raise them in darajah. Right? He'll raise them in darajah. Right? This is what we want. We don't care about this dunya. We don't care about, you know, the reputations. Oh, he's soft or he forgave or why did he do that? Oh, he's weak. It doesn't mean that. Remember the person who's more strong than us. He said he had the strength of 10 men. Was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who was more merciful than him? He was rahmatullah alameen. What about all the things that he went through? Right? He got boycotted. Right? He got ostracized. He got kicked out of his land. Right? All these things choked, slandered. They said he was majnoon. They said he did magic. They said he, all of these things. But what did he do? Did he get mad? Did he retaliate? He had the option to retaliate. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but the one who blots out, the one who forgives. Even in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a woman or people throwing trash in front of his house. Right? They kept throwing trash. Every time he came outside, just causing him a straight fitna, a trial and tribulation. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He just kept moving it. He just kept moving in, right? Because he understood that his mission was greater than his reputation or his feelings or his pride, right? They said pride is a destroyer, right? So what did Rasulullah Sallallahu do? By his actions and his character, he didn't get out of context. And then one day, there was no trash in front of his house. He said, well, what happened to that lady? What happened to that lady who was putting all this trash in front of my house? What happened to her? They said, Ya Rasulullah, she's sick. Oh, he went to go visit her, right? This is Hadith. He went to go visit the lady who was throwing trash in front of his house every day, and he went to go visit her. He said, why did you come visit me? He said, I want to come check up on you, right? And we're told from Hadith, because of his kindness, because of his rahmah, because of him having mercy and wanting to help people that this sister took shahad. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Okay? So we're talking about reconciliation. We're talking about doing better. We're talking about being brothers, right? Just like the Sahabas. We're told in the Hadith that the Sahabas, they were so close, right, with their brotherhood, that if they, they all sat down together, you could put a, a cloth or a sheet over all of them. That's how close they were together. They weren't spread out, and we're, some of us over here, some of us over there, they were close. They were brothers because they had a common denominator. They had a common goal, right? What was that common goal? It was La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. We believe in this, right? We strive in this, right? So therefore, we will do this and be brothers. Alhamdulillah, Also, like I said, today's subject matter, we're talking about astaghfar and tawbah, okay? Because Rasulullah sallallahu said that during this month of Ramadan, all of your sins will be forgiven, right? Except the kabahir. Those are the kabahir, those are the major sins. Those are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he threatens with the la'ana. He threatens with the curse. He threatens with the punishment. He, put, he threatens with the hellfire. Okay? So understand that whatever it is that you've done during this year, only Allah SWT knows this. It's not for you to tell anybody. Rasulullah SAW said, there's a person who did something at night and Allah hid it from the people. For the next day, he started telling the people. Right? So therefore, Allah punished him for that. 
but he said, but the one who does something, but he hides it from the people, right? Out of his shame, out of guilt, because he knows it's haram. But the person who hides it from the people, it says on that day of judgment, Allah will call him in a secret najwa. And he'll ask him, even though he already knows, did you do this? Did you do this? He said, yes, he did, yes. He said, well, because you hid these things from the people, right? Today I forgive you of your sins, okay? So when we do something, man, it's not for us to tell the people what we did. This is between you and Allah. The one who has no shame and the one who doesn't care, the one who doesn't have any taqwa, this is the one that goes about and tells the people what they do. Right? This is the one that would be punished with a punishment that only Allah can give you. Okay? Now with regards to a stakhfar and tawba, these are two different things. Some people think that a stakhfar and tawba are one and the same, but they're not. Right? We'll give you some evidence. In the Quran, Allah states in chapter 11, verse 52, Allah says, I'll give you in Shaitan Rajeem. وَيَاكَ وَمِسْتَقْبِرُوا رَبُّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ وَيَاكَ وَمِسْتَقْبِرُوا رَبُّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ بِدَرَارًا وَزِدَكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَى قُوَّتِكُمْ وَلَا تَتَوَلَّوْهُ مُدْرِمِينَ So Allah states, I'll give you in Shaitan Rajeem. O people, Make a stuffar to your Lord. Ask forgiveness from your Lord. Thumma tubu. Then make tawbah to Allah. Thumma tubu ilay. And then turn to Him in repentance. So Allah Subhanahu says, make a stuffar, make a stuffar Allah. Then you make tawbah. So it's two different things. Okay? You make a stuffar, then you make tawbah. Then He says, Yursi la sama alaykum bin arara. With the boss to make it tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will send abundant rain upon you. And he will increase for you kuwa, strength upon strength. And do not turn back as those who are criminals of the mujrimin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the formula with the boss to make it a stop for to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, when we do these things, and we do them properly, Allah subhanahu he'll send down the rain upon us. Right? He said, he'll increase the kuwa upon the kuwa. Right? He'll give us strength upon strength. So therefore, when we turn to Allah subhanahu wa when we ask forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa then these are the things that will acquire us strength from Allah subhanahu wa To turn to Allah, to cry to Allah subhanahu wa to ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa this is not weak. Right? The person of this dunya, you think, well, I'm going to just keep doing whatever it is that I'm doing. I don't care. Right? But the one who has taqwa, the one who has iman, he will make a stuck for a stuck for the law. Then he'll make tuba. Then he'll make toba to Allah for the law. Right? Toba means what? We have prerequisites of toba. Okay? Another ayah another ayat from the Quran. Allah states, I will be with the voice to a stuck for and toba being two different things. Allah says, "I will be with you in the next generation, and then you will turn to Him in Rahim Wadud." Allah says, "I will be with you in the next generation, and ask for forgiveness of your Lord. Then turn to Him in repentance. Verily, my Lord is of forgiving and loving." Okay, so again, make a stuff for, thumma tubu ilay. Then you turn to Him. So Allah Subhanahu wa tells us that we make a stuff for to Allah Subhanahu wa then we make tawbah to Him. So how do we make tawbah to Allah Subhanahu wa Okay? Again, if there's something that you did, and it must be the kaba'i, something that's major, right? We know what the kaba'i is, and if we don't know, there's a book by Imam Zahabi called Al Kaba'i. And in the beginning of the book, it says Ibn Abbas, he says there's about 70 kaba'irs. Okay? Whether it's zina, whether it's uh, murder, whether it's whether it's witchcraft, whether it's whatever it may be, horoscopes, going to the Kahib, these are the major sins. Any major sin, you're going to make toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is toba? What is toba? There are, pre there are, there are certain pre prerequisites to toba. The first thing with the regards to toba, right, we must, number one, admit the fault or admit the sin. There's a lot of people that may think, well, this is not haram, or there's nothing wrong with this, but it's okay. If you can't admit the sin, there is no tawbah. If you don't believe that there's certain thing that is haram, 
or bad or evil, if you don't believe it in your heart that it's haram, there is no toba. Because the first prerequisite, first prerequisite of toba is to admit that that sin is wrong. Secondly, you make a stuff for. You make a stuff for, a stuff for the law. Right? Now you ask Allah subhanahu for forgiveness of that sin. You be specific with that sin, whatever that sin may be. Oh Allah, please forgive me of this sin. Tell him what it is. Don't tell me. Don't tell your wife. Don't tell your kid, oh, I did this. Now you, you expose yourself. Now the people that you told, they all bear witness against you on the day of judgment. Even if you put it on the Facebook, Instagram, the World Wide Web, the World Wide Witness, right? All of that will bear witness against you on the day of judgment. So what? I admit the sin. I say, man, this is haram. I admit the reality that this is haram. Number two, I ask for forgiveness of that sin. Ya Allah, please forgive me this sin, whatever it may be. Right? That's between you and Allah, for the law. You, you voice that sin, whatever that sin may be. Right? Then after you voice that sin, then at, be sincere in asking for forgiveness of that sin. Some of the scholars say to the point that you make yourself cry. Right? Make yourself cry in asking for forgiveness of that sin, whatever that, may, whatever that sin may be, because you want to be sincere. There's nothing wrong with crying to Allah, for Allah. He loves the tears. Matter of fact, he said anyone that cries out of fear of Allah or taqwa of Allah, those tears will extinguish the fire. There's nothing wrong with crying with Allah, Allah. Nothing wrong with crying for this deen, right? Because it will extinguish the fire of the jaheem. Alhamdulillah, So be sincere, right, in asking for forgiveness of that sin. Next, you stop that sin. You stop that sin. Rasulullah sallallahu said, one who makes tawbah to Allah subhanahu but yet he returns back to that sin, he will not only will he get the present sin, but he'll get the past sins again. He'll get those past sins as well. Right? So when you make tawbah to Allah subhanahu make sure that you're sincere and making tawbah. Right? Don't say, astaghfirullah, man, astaghfirullah. And you're playing with it. Right? We can't play with Allah subhanahu Right? You wish to deceive Allah and the believers, but yet you deceive yourself. Right? So be sincere. Right? So what do you do next? You stop that sin. You stop that sin, whatever it may be. And only you know what that sin is. You stop it. What else do you do? You leave off all avenues that lead back to that sin. Persons, people, places, or things. Whatever that sin is, Whatever avenues that lead back to that sin, those are the things that you remove from your life. Right? People, person, places, or things. Remove all the avenues that lead back to that sin because you want to be forgiven of that sin. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where there's people there. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, not only are the people that drink common, not only are they cursed, but the people that go around them are cursed. Right? You don't want to be around people that are cursed. You don't know if the Allah of Allah is going to come right then and there and you're there with them. Right? When we say we enjoy the right and we forbid the wrong, that doesn't mean hanging around people that are doing haram. Right? Because even if you can't change it with your hands, you can't speak against it, then at least you got to hate it in your heart, and that still requires some type of action. I remove myself from that. Right? Because I hate it. Right? So I remove myself from that action. I remove myself from all the people, places, and things that lead back to that action. Then what do I do? Then Allah says, well, I'm in a salty hot, and then I increase in good deeds. But I'm in a, well, I'm in a salty hot, and then I believe properly. This is the part of Tobit. I believe properly. I have proper understanding of what is halal, what is haram. I have a proper understanding of my belief, and then I, I'm in a salty hot, and then I increase in good deeds. I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me of a certain sin, then I must increase in good deeds. I got to go far and beyond now. I don't just stay stagnant and stay in the same predicament, right, and do the same actions that I was doing because Allah said, and increase in the good deeds. So if I want to show Allah subhanahu wa that I want Tawbah, I want Allah to turn to me. I want Allah to show back His favor on me. Then what? I got to show that I'm willing and I'm worthy of that by increasing in my good deeds. I got to go far and beyond. I got to do better than the average, right? Because what makes me different than the next person? What makes me worthy of being forgiven of my sins? What makes me worthy of Allah's people are turning to me? And he says, well, I'm in the salty hot, right? Because Iman, right, or your belief, right, or your sincerity is what? Manifested by your amal. It's manifested by your actions, okay? And when you're increasing them good deeds, 
part of those good deeds of whatever sin it is that you did, now you be an advocate against that sin. Right? Now you be an advocate against that sin. So this is Tawbah. Okay? Allah SWT said that during this month of Ramadan, and even from uh, participating in Juma, you'll be forgiven of uh, all your sins from this Friday, the previous Friday, and three days. He said, except the Kabah here. Right? So even for just Juma, you got to ask for forgiveness of the Kabah here. Then even in Ramadan, he said, and those who fast during the month of Ramadan, and they stand up in Qiyamalaya, and they're sincere, and they're hoping and expecting the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said they'll be forgiven of all of their sins. Right? He said, except the Kabah here. Except the major sins. So this is what we're talking about, because we only know who it is that did the major sins. Or we all know who it is that they did something that they got to make Toba to. Right? So we're just talking about what are the prerequisites of Toba. Again, real quick, we must admit the sin. Right? You have admit to yourself that this is a sin. You can't say, well, uh, it, you know, it, it's my rule. It's, it's, it's okay. It's permissible. Some people say it's okay to do. Nah. You got to submit or not. Wa ta'ana. You have to believe in your heart that this sin, this action, right, is haram. Period. Right? Then, after you admit that sin, now you say, I stuck for the law, man. I will be lie. Right? Because now you're remorseful because now you understand this reality that what you've been doing is wrong. Right? So now you make, you make a stuff for the stuff for the law. Verbally. Right? And when you make a stuff for the law, a stuff for, then you're sincere in asking for that stuff for. And as the Siyuk say, to the point that you make yourself cry. And again, when you cry, this is not to cry in front of everybody so they can see you crying. <laughs> that's not, that's not what, that's not, that, that, that's not khasha. That's not being at the humble people. Right? To cry means that when nobody else is around. Right? When you're secluded in your own spot. Right? You put your face to the ground. Where Rasulullah said, this is the closest that you get to Allah. This is the best time to make dua. Right? Then cry out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Cry to him and say, oh Allah, please forgive me. Oh Allah, I'm weak. Oh Allah, you made me weak. Ya Allah, without your rahmah, I'm doomed. I'm of the khasirin. And mean it. Right? And mean it. That's only between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Then after we do that, then he said, man, stop that sin. You sit there and cry to Allah. You were sincere, you cried, you, you know, the tears came and everything. He said, now, stop that sin. How can you come out of, you know, making such the crying, tears and everything, and then right after that, you continue doing the sin. Or stop for Allah. That's not Tawbah. That's plain. And you can't, you can't deceive Allah. Okay? So he said, stop that sin. Remove all the apples that lead back to that sin. Right? Believe properly. Right? Increasing good deeds, and then be an advocate of that sin. Be an advocate against that sin. This is a part of Torah. Inshallah, we'll continue after the break, inshallah. <clears throat> Again, I'm the Bilal, Himini Shaitan Rajeem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, and Alhamdulillah, Wa Sharu Allah, Ilal Allah, Wa Sharu Allah Muhammadin, Abduhum Rasulum, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Baba. Again, man, this is the month of Ramadan. And we only have one shot of Ramadan. When Ramadan was over in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or even after the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahabas, they would, they, would, they would yearn for Ramadan again. When Ramadan was over, they become sad. Right? They become so sad when Ramadan was over. And they would yearn for the next Ramadan. They were preparing for the next Ramadan because this was, that was, 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 was beneficial for their soul. Okay? We have to understand, we only get one shot of Ramadan. We, not, we, may, we may not make it to next Ramadan. How many people do we know that didn't make it to Ramadan? Right before Ramadan, many people was dying. Many people that we know, right? Many people that we heard about, famous people, people that we went to school with, died before Ramadan got, they didn't make it to Ramadan, right? But we made it to Ramadan. So in this midst of us making this Ramadan, we gotta make it count. We got to make it count, right? We got to go far beyond, right? Because it's not just for us. We're doing it for our nafs. We're doing it for Allah, right? No pride here. We're not worried about the next person. Oh, but what did they think? Well, how did they feel? It doesn't matter. This is for you. Allah said that every deed that you do outside of Ramadan, right, that's for you. But for Ramadan, this is for me, right? It's for me. Right? So we don't know how much rahmah, how much mercy, and whatnot we can get in this Ramadan. 
So during this Ramadan, if there's anything that we did, you know what I'm saying, that we know that was incorrect, change it. Right? Anything that we know that we used to do, man, let's stop it. Okay? Also, another thing with the cross too, Toba. Right? Toba is not just turning to Allah for the law. It, Toba is also that if you have wronged somebody, you got to ask forgiveness of that person. If you absurded something from somebody, you stole something from somebody, you damaged something from somebody, you slandered somebody, right? You messed up somebody's reputation or whatnot, right? You got to make Toba, not only to Allah, but the law, but you got to make Toba to that person. You got to ask forgiveness from that person. You can't just go through the month of Ramadan and be like, oh, well, I fasted, alhamdulillah, well, inshallah, Allah forgave me of all my sins. No. What about the kabair? When you slander, that's kabair. Right? Namima, kabair. When you do giba, kabair. Right? You absurd somebody's property, the Rasulullah so -so said, the Muslim's life, his property, and his honor, his reputation is sacred. It's haram. It's sacred. Right? Anyone that's smashed on that, you gotta make toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You lied about somebody, you gotta make toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You slander somebody, you gotta make toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that person. You destroy somebody's property, you gotta make toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you gotta make toba to that person. You gotta compensate. Right? This deen is not a game. Oh, I made, oh, I'm fasting during the month of Ramadan. Ooh, I have an iftar. Oh, my stomach. But you didn't make toba. Right? With regards to the people that you have, you know what I'm saying, oppressed. Or the people that you have absurded. Or the people that you talked about. Okay? This is very important to this month of Ramadan. If there's anybody that you have offended, anybody that you slandered, right? Anybody that you gossip or back bit about, anybody that you manipulated and took something from them, right? You gotta make toba to Allah and you gotta make toba to that person. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, anyone who manipulates something from somebody, even if it's the smallest of a twig or a miswhack, you manipulate something from somebody, you take something from somebody, right? You lied about it, you manipulated it, and it's even as small as a twig or a miswhack, but also Allah some said, you'll be in a hellfire for that, right? So just think about all the things that's going on out here, people stealing, people lying, right? People going to the courts or whatnot, and they're making false, you know what I'm saying, false representation, they're making false reports and whatnot, you'll be in a hellfire for that, okay? So again, we're talking about stuck fog, and we're talking about Tawbah, Okay? Because this month of Ramadan is the time for us to be forgiven of our sins. Let's not play ourselves. Let's not manipulate ourselves. Okay? If you did something to somebody, man, man ask Tawbah from that person, ask Tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the, 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 the scholars say that also with regards to seeking forgiveness from somebody that you did something wrong to, you could also use wisdom. Okay? If the situation will be... Uh, more negative than positive, then you going to somebody and say, hey man, I did this to you, hey man, I did this to you, I took this from you, right? There's other ways you can do it. If you backbit somebody, then the same people that you backbit that person, go and tell the truth now. All the people that you slandered, or you went and slandered and you told all these people these things, now you gotta go back to these people, correct it, right? Tell them that you lied, and now say good things about that person. This is how you make Toba too, okay? So if you can't go to that person, and say, hey man, I'm sorry I did this. Hey man, I'm sorry, man, my word was boo-boo. Hey man, I'm sorry I lied on you. Hey man, I'm sorry that, you know, whatever it may be, I'm sorry I took this from you, right? I'm sorry I hit you. I'm so Whatever it may be, if you can't do that with that person, right, then at least the people that you did talk good about that person, say good things about that person. The same way that you say bad things about that person, go and say good things about that person. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa will uh, expiate that for you, inshallah. But that's the dicker for today, right? There's a difference between a stuff for and toe. There's a difference between a stuff for and toe. Okay? A lot of people say a stuff for the law. Oh, a stuff for the law. And they say it like it's a game. Okay? But when you say a stuff for the law, it doesn't just stop there. You don't get repentance. You don't get toe from a lost the law just because you said a stuff for the law. Oh, man, a stuff for the law. Now, the next is a thuma tubu. Then, Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawbah means that you're turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're turning back to obedience. Right? 
you're turning back to your submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And when I turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means that I turn back with everything. All the bad and negative things that I was doing, man, I gotta turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and correct all those things. Right? If I was one who was oppressive, I gotta stop that. If I was a criminal, I gotta stop that. Right? If I was one that was manipulating and lying, I gotta stop that. If you lie, right, Rasulullah said, the Muslim could be many things, but one thing the Muslim can't be is a liar. We could be many things, but the Muslim is not a liar. Okay? Because the liar is a hypocrite. And the hypocrite will be in the lowest of the hellfire. Okay? So one thing that a Muslim cannot be is a liar. And being a liar is very detrimental in this deen. Rasulullah said, a person will continue to lie until Allah will brand them as a liar and the only thing they can do is lie. They'll even believe their own lie. Why? Because they're a liar. Right? You ask a liar, man, are you telling the truth? They'll say, yeah. You can't trust a liar because he's a liar. He'll lie about a lie. Right? He's a liar. Okay? One thing that a Muslim cannot be is a liar. You can be many things, but you cannot be a liar. Man, we see reps of Allah Subhanahu from lying. Right? Then Allah Subhanahu said that on the day of judgment, that those who lie, Allah Subhanahu will stick a pole in their anus. This is in the Sahih Hadith. Right? Ibn Kathir, the Muslim Imam Ahmed. Sahih Hadith. He said that those who are the liars, that on the day of judgment, Allah will humiliate them in front of everybody. He'll stick a pole in their anus. And then on the top of that pole, it will reach out into the sky and there will be a flag on that pole and it said, I'm a liar. In front of everybody. You're sitting there with a pole with a flag on it that says, I'm a liar. Allah will humiliate you on the day of judgment. So we see reps of Allah subhanahu from lying. We ask Allah subhanahu to bless us to speak the truth. Right? Bless us not to even be in a situation where we got to lie. Right? We're the Muslims. Right? So we're the most truthful. So again, this is a dhikr, right? This is the month of Ramadan, and we want forgiveness of our sins. But we can't be forgiven of all of our sins if we don't fulfill the prerequisites of what it is to be forgiven of our sins. Allah said we will be forgiven of all of our sins except the kaba'ir, right? Except the things in which we wrong people, right? If you wrong somebody, you took something from somebody, you lied about somebody, you slandered somebody, right? You was, you was part of a Najwa or a conspiracy against somebody. You got somebody locked up. You went to the authorities and whatnot on your Muslim brother. Man, you got to make Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only that, you got to make Tawbah to that person. And if you can't do that, then you got to speak good about that person. And everybody that you talk to, bad about that person too, you got to go to them and say, hey man, that, good, that person's a good dude. Hey man, you know what man, I was lying about that. Man, you know what man, that wasn't even true. And then you get Tawbah. Right? But if you don't do that, then guess what? You don't get no toba. But on the day of judgment, that person will take from your good deeds. That person will take from your good deeds, and, and, and you can take from his bad deeds. So Allah subhanahu May Allah subhanahu wa bless us to be of those who make a stuff part during this month of Ramadan. May He bless us to be of those who make toba in our own fashion and way. We know what it is that we gotta make toba for. That's only between us and Allah. We ain't got to say, oh man, oh I made Tawbah. Oh, you know what I did last night? I prayed to Allah. That ain't my business. That's between you and Allah, subhanAllah. Well, oh man, I cried last night. Man, that's not my business. That's between you and Allah because Allah knows what's in the heart. But if you did cry sincerely, inshallah, man, that will extinguish, you know what I'm saying, the flames of the fire. So inshallah, that's the dhikr for today. Alhamdulillah, mean. May Allah bless us to continue in this fast of Ramadan. May he bless us to be sincere during the rest of these days of the month of Ramadan. And may we be of those who are able to be uh, truthful enough with ourselves to figure out what are the things that we need to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa for during this month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, I mean. Anything that I say good today, I say Alhamdulillah, I mean, because all knowledge is from Allah subhanahu wa Anything that I say bad is from my own nasa, from shaitan. So I say, Alhamdulillah, I mean. I'll keep